So my name is Adam Wells. I'm a clinical academic consultant neurosurgeon here at the Royal Adelaide Hospital and the University of Adelaide. And I'm also the Abby Simpson Clinical Fellow for the Neurosurgical Research Foundation. So um, I first um, developed a love of neurosurgery in medical school. Um, in the good old days of medical school, it's changing, but the, the old days of medical school, the first three years were all anatomy based and learning about different parts of the body. And in our third year of medical school, we did neuroanatomy. And I thought this is fantastic. I always knew I wanted to be a surgeon, but the neuroanatomy was just amazing. Um, it was just such a complex organ and it was just fascinating. Um, so I started to explore um, neurosurgery as a, as a career option. And I found that there were some neurosurgeons in Adelaide doing research and taking on medical students. And so I approached uh, one of them, his name is Nigel Jones, a professor of neurosurgery and another patron of the Neurosurgical Research Foundation. And Nigel took me on as a medical student for research and uh, the rest is history. So neurosurgery training was a, a long ordeal. Um, it's, um, so medical school went for about seven years for me and that included a research year. And then I did uh, an internship and a couple of years of general residency before I started my uh, surgical training and then neurosurgical training. Um, and neurosurgical training went for another six years, including a, a PhD in the middle of all that. So um, all up from medical school to um, finally finishing neurosurgical training and fellowships, including Australia and overseas, we're talking about 20 years. Wow. So, so yeah, a couple of decades of my life. So I went to Adam Brooks Hospital, which is um, in Cambridge. So it's a Cambridge University Hospital. So most of the hospitals, the large uh, teaching hospitals in the UK are affiliated with the university. And so this one was affili affiliated with Cambridge University, which was amazing. So there's a lot of research going on in Cambridge University, as you'd imagine. And um, Cambridge town and city itself is just a nice little quaint little city, but steeped in history. and these cobblestone streets and uh, you know, centuries old buildings and um, all the university buildings and cathedrals and it was just a, an amazing experience and, and fantastic opportunity. So, um, and we took our, our daughters there and my wife and we lived in the UK for a year and just the, the cultural change and the, um, the different experiences we had and, um, and we'll never forget that, it's absolutely amazing. And um, you know, my travel is also supported by the Neurosurgical Research Foundation. You know, they helped help fund uh, me how to get overseas. So you know, that was you know much appreciated and and not taken for granted. So um, operating is fantastic. You know, the, the challenges with surgery is incredible, and um, it makes you think and and develop new techniques and skills. Um, and it's uh, always challenging. There's, there's always something else that you know, makes you think harder or differently. Um, so the mental challenge of neurosurgery is great. The people that you meet are fantastic. And the fact that you can improve their quality of life and actually um, make them a, a change for the better. So that's the, the best thing by far about neurosurgery. So, so the way I like to approach patients is really a patient-centric approach. Um, I, I like to be personable and uh, introduce myself and I almost always insist that they call me Adam, not Dr. Wells. Uh, and I like to learn a bit about their background and why they're coming to see me, what their expectations are. Um, and um, I, I do my very best to try and meet those expectations. You know, I, I give my opinions, but I, I really find out what's important to a patient and um, you know, almost bend over backwards to, to try and achieve that for them, if possible. What's the most hours you've ever worked in one week? Okay, I'm gonna say 84 hours when I was a resident, and we used to do night shifts of 12 hours, um, week on, week off. What's the longest you ever went without sleep? Uh, two days, okay. What was your first surgery on a real patient? Um, first surgery in a real patient would have been insertion of an intracranial pressure monitor, so making a tiny little hole in the skull and popping in a little catheter to measure pressure inside the brain. What's the longest surgery you've ever performed? Uh, when I was at the Children's Hospital, we used to do combined surgeries with the plastic surgeons and craniofacial surgeons, and I remember taking out a tumour from a young boy's mid-face, and we finished at about 4 a.m. from an 8 a.m. start, so that's about 20 hours worth. 
yeah. and is that the most complex surgery? Um, that's probably one of the most complex surgeries I've ever done or the um, other ones are the brain tumours like um, young um, man whose brain tumour I took out this morning, that was a pretty complex one as well. What's the most common surgery that you Probably the most common surgery I perform would be lumbar spine decompression, so lumbar laminectomy for people who have nerve root compression and they can't walk with a condition called neurogenic claudication. That makes up probably most of my practice. And what's the most surgeries you've ever performed in one day? Um, I remember when I was in Cambridge and um, I was running the emergency theatre list one day and we did five operations and everyone was flabbergasted. They couldn't understand how I did five operations in one day. And I said, what do you mean? This is how Australians do it. This is normal for us. So I'll say five. Yeah, I, I do have a strong interest in neurosurgical research. Um, so again, very fortunate to be supported by the Neurosurgical Research Foundation as the Abby Simpson Clinical Fellow. Um, and uh, we are doing a lot of exciting clinical research here at the Royal Adelaide Hospital. Um, so a, a lot of my background interest is in trauma. And when I was in Cambridge University, I was there as a, a clinical trauma fellow. So um, there are many different aspects about neurosurgery being trauma, uh, brain tumours, vascular disease, spinal conditions as well, but, but trauma is my, my pet interest. Um, and we're doing a lot of clinical research now on management of brain uh, trauma, about um, how uh, blood clotting can influence uh, outcomes after brain injuries. And um, newer projects, we're looking at um, chronic subdural hematomas, which are very common blood clots inside the brain, and the actual um, uh, concentration of different types of um, substances in the fluid that we drain out and how we can better manage these um, patients in the future. Um, my love of research has been ever since I was a medical student when I was first introduced to neurosurgery um, and Professor Nigel Jones and his laboratory when, um, when he was working in the University of Adelaide um, and um, doing research projects with him and then a PhD with Bob Vink who is another big neuroscience researcher here in Adelaide. Um, and it's just the, um, the, you know, the, the, the desire to find out answers to things and there's questions and, and just trying to um, really figure out how to be better at neurosurgeons. The Neurosurgical Research Foundation, this, this, is, this unique thing we have here in Adelaide is absolutely fantastic. I don't think there's anything like it in Australia, perhaps not even the world, um, that it's been established for so long by some of the very senior neurosurgeons back in the day and had the foresight to, to think ahead to this. Um, Without the Neurosurgical Research Foundation, I wouldn't be doing any of the projects basically that I'm doing now. Um, so they um, more or less funding my full-time research assistants, uh, funding projects and purchasing of equipment. And um, without the NRF, uh, the neurosurgical research, clinical neurosurgical research in the Royal Adelaide Hospital would just grind to a halt. Uh, it's absolutely vital for making any of it happen. Um, we need um, more awareness into brain tumours. Uh, they're very common. Um, unfortunately, we're not doing particularly well with managing brain tumours. You know, we're doing the best with what we can and what we have with modern medicine, but it's not good enough. You know, people are still dying because of brain tumours. Um, people are still suffering because of brain tumours. Um, and we don't have enough, nearly enough support in the community. Um, and we need to work better at um, treating people with brain tumours like they should be treated with you know, respect and with dignity and providing the support that they desperately need. Um, I love gardening, so in my spare time I like to spend time in the garden and chop down hedges and trim things and sweep up leaves and usually after a weekend of gardening I've got scratches all over my hands and arms, usually. Um, the other thing I like to do is play basketball. I'm not very tall uh, but I like to shoot hoops, so um, I've got a basketball ring in my backyard and particularly when the weather's nice, just go outside, pick up a basketball and just uh, throw it in the hoop as much as I can, as best as I can, but I'm not that good. Yeah. <laughs> so my interesting fact about neurosurgery is about the cervical spine, is that all mammals, including humans and giraffes, all have seven cervical vertebrae. So it doesn't matter how long the neck is in a mammal, we all have seven vertebrae.